During the design of an exhibition, moving objects from one place to another is always a challenge. However, with a careful planning and a good organization, nothing is impossible. Jackie Britton, former head of collection storage at the Science Museum in London, tells that everything can be moved without losing or damaging materials. The first step is to look at the objects to move and consider how fragile they are, what sizes they have, whether the work of some specialist contractors would be necessary. As Britton said, if you do not know what you are moving before you move it, you will never know if you have lost anything afterwards. Secondly, it is important to take a look at the physical access to the spaces in order to check the presence of possible blockages or narrower points. After that, it is necessary to calculate the budget and evaluate the time needed for moving all the objects. It is also important to define the packing method and estimate the number of staff members and their costs, as well as the amount of required shelving. As mentioned in the previous lesson, the Spectrum 5.0 provides some guidelines for the movement of objects. Every loan request must comply with the policy provided by the museum and, if it is accepted, the object becomes reserved for the loan. In some cases, the borrower must provide additional information such as a facilities report. After that, if the loan is still valid, all the details of each item will be provided to the borrower. Finally, once the parties have signed the loan agreement, a condition checking and a technical assessment of the requested items are carried out. The Share Museum East provides a freely downloadable, very good guide for packing objects. All the necessary conservation works should be carried out in order to comply with the security conditions. Moreover, all the pieces must have an insurance or indemnity cover. When the objects exit the museum, the hosting institution must monitor the loan and confirm the safe arrival. When the objects return, it is necessary to check that all the conditions of loan have been met and to record any relevant information in case of future requests from the same borrower. Despite of all the possible precautions and security measures, every time an object is moved from one place to another, there is a percentage of risk. This assumption leads to a more theoretical concept, recently highlighted by Tommaso Montanari and Vincenzo Trione in their book Contro le Mostre, meaning Against the Exhibitions. They comment on the existence of a quite common format used for contemporary exhibitions. Many of them are focused on easy and light topics specifically addressed to a very large audience. The scientific content is thus sometimes low, being mainly centered on one single famous artwork from a prestigious international museum. The reasons are of course commercial and promotional. These are the so-called blockbuster exhibitions, with the entertainment as the main purpose. This criticism by Montanari and Trione is because the exhibition should be a medium for allowing people to know more about an artist or a historical period and should be the result of a long research process. As underlined also by Hans Ulrich Obrist, the curator must put himself at the service of the artworks or archaeological artifacts, not using them for creating exhibitions in series. The quantity must never overwhelm the quality. This is an important point to keep in mind when deciding to design an exhibition or a cultural event in general. A possible solution to the risky moving of objects from one seat to another is constituted by the creation of exhibitions without physical objects. These are the so-called experience exhibitions, mainly made of videos and 3D reproductions. On one hand, some reviewers have positively evaluated these experiments as a way of preserving the artworks. On the other hand, there are also criticisms towards the merely commercial purpose, not always supported by a thorough scientific research. Which are the rules for a noteworthy exhibition? Georges Didier Huberman said that an exhibition should start from the actual content of the work of art and its needs. An exhibition is not interesting because of its innovative shape or structure, but because it finds the right way of sharing the content of an artwork, creating the perfect frame for it. Obrist stressed the importance of creating exhibitions which will be long-term projects, always considering their sustainability. Montanari and Trione proposed their to-do list for making noteworthy exhibitions too. These are some of their indications. 
First, an exhibition should be conceived as a medium for making research advance and not as a purpose in itself. Second, it must be really necessary. Third, it should present an idea, a concept, an artistic or historical reconstruction which must be clear to a more or less educated public. Fourth, it should not be subjected to political pressure and the scientific opinions of the authors must be always respected. Fifth, the educational devices should be designed with great attention and careful. In the light of the criticisms presented above, it is important to underline again the necessity of not lowering the cultural level of museums, exhibitions and cultural events of any kind. The engagement of a wide audience does not automatically involve the simplification and trivialization of ideas, concepts and culture in general. Maintaining a high level of culture is of course the task of museum staffs, but also the visitors should cooperate. In which way? Let's touch upon the concept of critical museum visitor, an expression coined by Margaret Lindauer. This type of visitor approaches a museum or a cultural event with independent and critical thinking, underlining the strengths and weaknesses of the setting up. This concept will be resumed in the next lesson focused on the role of the public and on some strategies for engaging people.